Welcome back to part 4. Last time in Terra Firma Greg, I processed over 100 blooms and 30 steel to make 3 steam machines, a press, and with treated wood, a small create setup, providing infinite water to my steam boiler. With this setup, I was fully in the steam age, and it's time to progress to electricity. No, oh, I was so scared of that happening. But first I have to mention three problems in recording the start of this video. The first problem is that I ended last video at a point just 15 minutes before the end of recording, since I spent the rest of that episode making a fan that I couldn't use. Invest everything into the fan and don't even think about how you're gonna get lava. I can't move lava. The second problem is that I got a really bad cold just a week after I released the video and again two weeks later making recording basically impossible for most of the month. But the worst problem came when I finally started recording again to make some machines, and at some point I started recording audio through two inputs on OBS, making it stack the audio with this terrible noise. So because of this, I will have to voice over a lot of that specific recording to save your ears from that noise. Alright, so... I'm now recording this over two weeks after the last recording. I got very sick. Still have a little bit, but I think I'll be able to record now. I am starving to death. Do I have any food? No, I don't. Okay, so some people were asking how I got food in the winter, and the, the answer is I don't. I don't have any good source, especially after the two tragedies I had with my food supply. Actually didn't show one of them, the vessel was destroyed. But the best method I have now is just this. Punching, not punching fish, I actually use my chisel since my chisel has a shitload of durability and decent damage. I often eat the fish raw and just so that I can sprint swim. And then another thing I'm unsure if I actually showed was this. I made a grill with some spare wrought iron I had and then that cooks my stuff quite quickly. I can often do a full batch with just two logs. It is quite expensive though, two wrought iron double plates, but I made a lot of wrought iron in that episode, so it was not a problem. It's also not significant enough to actually edit into the video since I made so much. So, what I ended last video off on is saying... is saying that I'd have to get red steel. Yeah, why I said I needed steel, red steel specifically, and blue steel, is for this bucket. And why I want the bucket is, as you probably just seen, but it's been two weeks for me, uh, I made a fan, stupidly. Nothing to do with it. And that's gonna need gold and copper and... Oh, Maybe I should just wait. Yeah, I really could just use a steam furnace. New plan. That fan is gonna be useless until LV. I... I don't want anything to do with red steel or blue steel, it is way too much. I have to find a lot of things that I just don't want to go through, so instead we're gonna work on two things, the forge hammer and the furnace. So let's start with the steam furnace. Steam furnace is gonna make things very, very easy, especially even in steel making, and that doesn't even look that expensive, mainly just a wrought iron cost. Which is unfortunate, since we don't have any wrought iron. So I'll have to make a new batch. So after that disaster in oh, the no. hematite mine, I'm going to make a new hematite mine, and it's going to be a quarry. I am very aware that I'm using the supports wrong. Most of the cave you see are where I just get really greedy. I go for some ore that I see, and I'm like, okay, there's a chance that it'll collapse, but it's fine. And then it collapses. Okay, well forged. That is actually not ideal. I was hoping to get a much higher rating than that, but still we have a steel mining hammer. It will be much faster. Okay, so without a spade, I can't really do this too quickly, and I'm probably going to eat through this shovel's durability, but might as well replace it with steel. Okay, we're fully down to the stone layer, which ironically means things will speed up. And this is why we made the mining hammer.
Okay, we're already very deep. I didn't even look up yet. Oh, I was about to turn around and check something, but here we are. A lot of people found it funny that I said it's not tedious and then my entire mind collapsed. But it was not tedious. I'm telling you, it's not tedious. That's just part of the game. My old mind's gone. This one's going to be better. Okay, I can't actually go across there. But I'm going to do this just so that I can break some of the wall rocks. But yeah, quarries are so much better. Look at how much I'm getting here. Every single time I go iron mining, it's exponentially better than the last time. Like, this thing is probably going to supply us for most of the rest of the game. At least until Eevee, which is when I can automate iron. So this is all the iron we got. And even a little bit of gold. That will carry us far into Greg Tech. Yeah, I forgot to use the new strategy with the blowpipe, so we're gonna do that now. I actually haven't tested if this works. They might have patched it in Terra Firma, Greg. In which case, I've just gotten trolled by everyone and I'm about to die. Okay, it just works. That is kinda stupid. I haven't done blooms in a very long time because of my sickness. But I still remember how to do them. So while this thing is going, I'm gonna go get some food and I will be back. So weirdly, there's only 13 blooms in here. So maybe one more charcoal next time and that'll give me the perfect balance so that I'm not using too much charcoal. gonna cool these all back down. Once I made all 18 wrought iron ingots, I made seven plates and also made a second bloomery to increase iron production. With all this iron and a few steel plates, I made a steam furnace which allows normal smelting recipes and renders the fan even more useless. And furnace. Okay, and this steam furnace will completely change the game if I just put this limonite ore in there. It'll start cooking it about as fast as vanilla. Pretty sure vanilla takes 15 seconds, so this is actually slightly faster. And that's just a cast iron ingot. Without any heating, any casting, any melting. And this isn't even supposed to be able to cast into a full ingot. We're literally making things out of thin air because that's how industrialization works. And I think cast iron plates can... I don't know, maybe cast iron plates can be used for the blast furnace, which would make building it up very cheap. Especially since fire bricks can be made out of compressed fire clay, which is now dirt cheap. It just needs... let me see here, yep, clay dust and brick dust. Okay, raw yellow limonite. This is another nice thing, I don't have to crush any of my ores, I can just take these five raw ores, which would normally be 31 millibuckets. That is... I'd need four or five of these to make an ingot, but now it's just one, and it gets smelted in ten seconds. And we're gonna get another absolutely crazy machine. The Forge Hammer. Which I might even have the resources for already. Nope. I'll need more wrought iron. Okay, so this time I'm gonna have my audio working properly. What was that? Get the pipes there, and then that's the macerator, so I have to swap these. There, forge hammer. And then I'm just gonna put that over there and turn on the boiler. So, the forge hammer's main use is just gonna be processing blooms, because it's not a good idea to make plates with this thing. Okay, so now full bloom production can begin with two bloomeries, and all the iron I'll ever need to run them. Yeah, 30 input stacks on both of these, and then I'm pretty sure I don't even need heating because of the forge hammer, and I might even make another forge hammer if I get enough wrought iron out of this. Also, this is gonna take a really long time. It's 50 seconds per recipe. It's not actually better than uh, doing it in the anvil, but it means I can do other things at the same time. We have all the steam machines except the extractor already. 
So then I started thinking about the goal for this episode and decided to start working toward electricity, which would be one of the largest struggles of this playthrough. But the main thing that stuck out to me was the cables, which need rubber. To get rubber, I would have to tap Kapok trees, which only spawn at an annual precipitation above 320 millimeters, which means another journey equivalent to the Kaolinite journey all the way down to New Hecuba. I also have no good source of food for the trip. I did plant sugarcane over there, which should be done by now. But that's, that's not enough. Wait, there's still garlic here. It survived. We actually have food! Okay, so garlic is just good like that, and it can survive any climate. Negative 16 degrees, and it's just growing. Let's get the tap. Oh, this should be very simple. Draw, light hit, shrink, there. Okay, four tree taps now. Okay, so the goal for this trip is to get Kapok and Kaolinite. I want to fill at the very least two chests with Kaolinite, and the rest will be filled with other useful things I find at the continent. Oh yeah, I was gonna let you guys name the river here, and then I completely forgot to leave that in the video, so now it's still just called the Blank River. I don't know if I want to name it now, because it's just the Blank River now. Okay, we're off into the open ocean. Well, not really, since the coast is right there. Oh yeah, the natives are there. That might be a problem. I'll probably call them something else. Maybe maybe they have a name for themselves. Also, wow, it is lagging right now. Why is it doing that? I'm not loading anything. Whoa. Apparently I am loading something. Oh, there's a cave-in under the water. And it's causing a ton of lag. All those red dots are items and all the pink dots are um, blocks falling. And it's just going. That's why I heard calcite breaking. It's still going everywhere. No wonder it's lagging. Holy shit. It causes so much lag. You can see a little bit of stuttering here as well. It's mainly the kelp breaking that causes the lag. Because it destroys all the ground directly beneath. Okay, we're already at the new Hecuba continent. That's honestly faster than I remember. That's an orca. Is he pathfinding? He's pathfinding to me. They're kind of smaller than I thought they'd be. Still terrifying though, since I know what TFC creatures can do. That thing would probably two-shot my boat. So, we have to follow the river all the way through here. And then, yeah, through this swamp, and then down this river, through the lakes, then through this river. And then we'll be in Eden Bay. I kind of want to see if there's an easier way to the Kaolinite through here. We should stop by New Hecuba anyways. I planted a bunch of jute there. There's a crocodile right there. He is chasing me. Okay, crocodile's no longer chasing me, but I think we got bigger things to worry about. Yeah, it's the natives, isn't it? They're back. They even got banners. Is there anything left of my base? The farm's gone. Nice banners, though. Oh! Oh, I don't have my weapon! No! Oh, it's Jover. Well, shit. Clearly the natives had seized my colony and turned it into some kind of fortress. I quickly decided that this unnecessary aggression had to be stopped and started making some weapons to hopefully overpower their superior numbers with steel. Okay, now weld these. And we have a steel chest plate. This will probably be the best armor for most of the game. Yeah, this is why the forge hammer is good. It's not good for on demand, but you can just stockpile all of your wrought iron if you leave it running forever. I'm gonna put this limonite in here just for more cast iron. Draw, bend, punch. Perfectly forged. Okay, this is gonna be a good sword then. This is actually better than a diamond sword. Diamond swords do 7 attack damage and... With the way Terra Firma Craft works, where everyone basically has only six hearts, I I could kill them pretty quickly with this. Yeah, I think I can... Whoa, let's do not do that. Why was I taking off the blowpipe? Okay. And now I have the defense of iron armor. And a weapon that's better than a diamond sword. And I'm talking about vanilla iron armor. 
Yeah, I don't know why the steel chest plate doesn't have a model. Absolutely everything else works. So that's our shield, and that should be everything we need to go fight that kingdom. And I'm no longer going to call them the natives, because that is slightly racist. Three of those logs, and then, yes, that's what it's supposed to do. And that's basically like some weird slabs, like cutting off the top part. And then we carve this with an axe. And then we burn it. I'll probably show some footage from how to make everything on how this is actually quite realistic. Yeah, the plan is I'm gonna go around here, place the bed there, and then try to take the base back. And if that fails, then we respawn there and hopefully try again. If not, I'll try to sue for peace to try to negotiate my dead body back. And more importantly, my boat, which has all of our important stuff on it. Just like in episode 2, we're in a pine dugout and we have to go all the way south. This time there's no Q&A though. Something I didn't think about is all of my food is in the large vessel. And I can't actually reach that unless there's land to place the vessel on. So I might actually start starving. I'm gonna turn to this waypoint. And why do I have the ability to teleport? Do I have cheats on? No, I don't. What? Okay, that shouldn't work. Whatever. Just gonna call it something that no one has ever named an island ever before. No war-ending battles will be held here. Oh, wow. What do they have going on over there? I think that's their castle. Or not castle. They didn't have a castle. Did they build something new? They're probably guarding that, though. I don't think we could sneak back our stuff. They would guard it pretty well. Oh, someone's waiting at the wall. Okay, my stuff is so powerful. Okay, I think that's all three of them. Take back everything of value. Why didn't they respawn at the beds here? Is there anything left of the base here? I mean, they got their banner. I think we should really take the fight to them. Ow, ow, okay. I don't know if I can get in there. They're still firing. Can they see me when I'm in the dark like this? Okay, run in, run in. He has a shield, they, they do have more equipment. Oh no, they got me, they got me. Well, time to negotiate, peace. After about 30 minutes of negotiating using signs, I was forced to give up my colony and most of my steel equipment, including my perfectly forged steel sword, and when I tried to protest these demands, they threatened to kill me and take everything. I also got the name of their empire, the Arnian Empire, and was allowed to get away with my important items for the Kapok journey, but this peace deal will not be forgotten. So we have two options to get to the Kaolinite. Option one, I go through here, and I, well, I try to go around here and try to get to the Kaolinite that way. Or I do the normal way, and since we we do actually have to search for Kapok, I'm actually going to take the long way. Honestly, why didn't I do this for the original colony? It is going south. Bunch of palm trees there, that actually indicates that it's getting warmer, well, uh, more humid in that direction. 250. Wow, I feel really stupid now. And it's going further south. Roll the clip of the moment I turned around to go in the river. I'm gonna go back north, and I'm gonna use the river. Stupidest decision of my life. This is such a good area. Oh no, all of these- all three of these rivers are dead ends. It's not insanely far from the Kalanite, but it's far enough that it's a bit annoying. I don't want to get my hopes up, but this is getting close to a valid Kalanite zone. 
Also, someone notified me that it's pronounced Kaolinite, and I checked the pronunciation, and they are right. But I have been pronouncing it Kaolinite for so long that I'm not even gonna change. Also, coal. I might take this. I'm willing to throw it out if, if I end up needing more room in my inventory, but coal is very useful for us. 291. Oh, I guess this might actually be a valid area. Come on, where is it? Yeah, there. Man, I got way too used to how, how quickly the spade mined. But this whole hillside, just all the way up to probably my waypoint, is all Kalanite. I want all the kaolinite I need for casting tables, fire brick molds, maybe even another crucible if I want to. I'm just shaving the top of this hill off. Yeah, this entire area is all kaolinite. I'm gonna dig through here and make a canal. Because again, I'm the British. I colonize areas and build canals there. Panama Canal was not built by the British, but Suez was. But this is nothing compared to either of those. This is the tiniest little canal. Probably wouldn't even make it on a map. Oh yeah, that works. Okay, hey, another exposed sphalerite vein. Andesite is just... Uh-oh. Uh, andesite dust. Okay. Fuck. Respawn point set... Oh, I disabled chat for a thing. I'm... Holy shit. People warned me. <laughs> I didn't realize it was that bad. Okay, respawn point set. That is terrifying. We're gonna go down this river all the way through here into this lake, get more kaolinite, and then go through here off of the assumption that there is more precipitation to the east. Okay, there's coal here. <laughs> No, not again. Oh, I said it earlier that people thought they would say I was cheating if I found another one. Guess what we have here? Yep. <laughs> Graphite. Oh, uh, I, I gotta take it, though. And this time I can actually use my mining hammer to mine, since I have the ability to grind all of these things. That's so dumb. I was about to joke because I saw the coal vein, and then I realized that it was actually in a gabbro vein and saw the diamonds at the bottom. But yeah, here we're finally at some new kaolinite. Throw this all in the kaolinite chest. Not even, yeah, not even enough space in there. So our first goal, a chest load of kaolinite, is done. Um, I think... Yeah, that is Capoc. I see the logs there. Okay, let's actually just go over there then. Oh, I mean, there's not even a small amount of Capoc. This probably goes up into the 400s with that density. And watch this. Capoc's actually amazing if you want a lot of logs. Just one tree and it filled my inventory. Oh, there's just Kaolinite here. <laughs> I might as well. I'm waiting for stuff right now, so I'm just gonna... What is this? Oh, Papyrus! Okay, no, no, I'm sorry for the Undertale joke. Whoa! That is some fog. Okay, so to simulate fog, they straight up lower your render distance to a point that shouldn't even be possible. I think this is one render distance. That's really cool, but also at the same time kind of terrifying. I do have to go to the Arnian Empire base to try to get my stuff back. So we're not going to leave this continent completely, not yet at least. I'm going to actually change the waypoint. Okay, I just need to get my food back, and then maybe I could get my sword back, because that thing was perfectly forged, and I don't want to just leave that without a fight. 
Oh, we lost our mutton. Okay, I'll just throw that out. And... Garlic and pumpkin chunks are mostly fine, but the pumpkin chunks are only lasting another day. I think I could try to steal it. I don't think I'd win a fight with them, especially since they have my steel stuff, but maybe if they put it in storage. Oh, he's there. He has steel armor. Okay, no. Never mind. Never Let's leave. They're still throwing stuff. Okay. Get the boat. Where's the... Here. They are... Wait, how can they still shoot me from there? So we're not getting that back. I can make a new one. Okay, so that is our trip to New Hecuba done. Explored all of that. Unfortunately lost our war with the Arnians, but I don't think we're done with them. Okay, we've made it to this river. Which still has no name. I might just call it the Blank River. Oh yeah, and the current temp is 12 degrees, so all this snow will start melting. Here we are, with my bridge over there. Okay, let's get everything going again. And start farming as well. So I could leave some of this garlic in the ground to die, and then... Oh, actually some of this did that. So if you let a fully grown plant die and then you break it, it gives you extra seeds. Okay, all the pumpkin chunks in here died, unfortunately. Well, uh, rotted. But I have the garlic here, so that garlic will last us for a long time. And then I'm gonna fertilize this all, especially the jute. So I don't know if papyrus can be grown here. Temperature might be too low, 19. Yeah, temp is too low. This is our new rye and wheat farm, and that is going to supply us with all the food we will need. And I'll even fertilize it. But yeah, these will grow in just six days, so that's very nice. So now I want to work on the factory building that I keep mentioning. Uh, oh, I really should not have planted the capoc there, because that's where I'm going to extend the building. For that. Ooh, church bricks would do well. I might just go into a building world and figure this out. Alright, so it has been about over a week since the last recording, because I probably mentioned in the intro that I got very sick repetitively over the span recording this, but I should be able to record this normally, and I don't want to make this video all about my sickness, so I want to immediately get back to progressing. You can sort of see what the style's gonna be. And then this wall can later get taken down for a factory expansion. I could probably take down this wall if I want to. This is just gonna be our starter LV area. And what would be really nice is if I had the sawing machine, well, the mechanical saw, which would double the amount of lumber I get out of this. That's still not that bad. I can do that. Okay, time to sidetrack. We're gonna get a saw. So I don't know how my one steam boiler is keeping up with this. I'm gonna run a bunch of machines at the same time here. Okay, haven't made a new machine in two weeks. Okay, there's the wire cutters, and then I can 
finally make these buzz saws. Call me the Pale King. I'm making three buzz saws. No, he makes way more than that. There, mechanical saw. So I can finally make four plank blocks out of one log. Okay, that is very annoying. There, the factory is done. Except for the glass windows, but that is for later. Perfectly on cue, these Kapok trees are done. So, my next, my next objective is to get a couple more water wheels and then get a full shaft system going up here. So that I can have my create system actually more accessible. So, to people who haven't seen modded Minecraft uh, of this kind before, you may be thinking, you've been running on one water wheel this whole time, that should be fine, right? Uh, well, probably, yes, in theory that would be fine. But, I want things fast, I want mass production, I want a factory, I'm gonna get a line of eight large water wheels, plus a small water wheel. It's gonna be really large, I'm gonna spin everything at like 128 RPM, and it's gonna be cool. Seven large water wheels. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, here is a huge line of water wheels. Most realistic mod, eight water wheels in a row. Yeah, I'll still do that. So that will make the press even faster than it was. Oh, actual speed, finally. So then we go like this. There. That's an even faster saw. So I just doubled the speed of all the machines and moved them up here. Okay, so I have that system up there. And before I do anything else in that progression, we're gonna have to go looking for redstone. And that is going to take forever. So I know it spawns in granite, and granite is under rhyolite, so I'm gonna go over here. I don't know anyone who hasn't struggled searching for redstone in this pack. Oh yeah, didn't I stop mining here just because of how caved in everything was? Like, look at the cobblestone everywhere. Oh yeah, then I started tunneling around here. And I think I might go tunneling just a little bit to enter this cave. I keep seeing it on my map. And it seems absolutely massive, so I want to take a look at it. So in theory, I should be basically right on top of the start of the cave. But my slope is very, very shallow. Oh, but here it is. It is actually as large as, as advertised. That is insane. Oh, wow. I honestly thought I would get disappointed by this cave. Oh, wow. I wish I could see more of this cave, but, like, look at this. Like, I didn't turn the screen black. This is just what it looks like in F1 mode. So there's a hematite and a tin vein intertwined here. Ain't no way. <laughs> okay, well, that was a very, very easy trip. Kind of scared me, though. You don't want to see red lights in the middle of the cave. I can't express just how scary these caves are, though. Like, we're even on the on the easy end of it. I'm just going to turn up the sound so that you guys can hear it. Dealing with that in just pitch black and then seeing red lights in the distance, not fun. 
Uh, I'm gonna come back here because I don't want to start digging. It'll start a bunch of cave-ins. I'm gonna get a wooden roof and then start digging. Okay, we're here. So, I'm gonna start by getting a chestnut roof here. Because planks, and especially plank slabs, are not affected by gravity and cave-ins can just land on them. But basically, I'm taking our cave and turning it into a quarry by removing the danger of cave-ins from, from above. I had my mic muted as well! Even better. Of course there's a poisonous material in here, okay. Yeah, I started coughing again, so I had to go on mute, and then I started dying. Okay, so now I have to think about where I mine. At least the redstone vein isn't in andesite. That would make it so much worse. There might be a way to safely pick those up, because the hazard warning says it's dangerous to inhale them. So what if you find a way of just not breathing it in? So at this point I realized just how difficult it would be to reach LV in this episode, considering the immense resin and paper cost, while I don't even have a source of paper, and that's all not even mentioning the deployer needed to make the circuits. So I changed the goal for this episode, and just decided to get the infrastructure for LV so I could do it next episode. So that meant a much larger blast furnace and the ability to make glass. Okay, then I can go like this, and I think it's with a hammer. Bronze crate, which is a double chest in just one block. So let's start with glass working. I, I don't know where to start with this. I'm gonna search it up in the manual and come back to you. So this makes us a bunch of glass batches. And then I'm just gonna try to learn how this works. Now, there's little things here for, like, basin pour and table pour. I'm hoping that those are just buttons that I can find in the GUI. I'm hoping there is a GUI, because I'm completely in the dark here. One of my friends figured out glass making in about 15 minutes, so... I'm probably okay. Okay, so now it's hot, but it's not doing anything. I just looked at at what Flurbin did for this, and it turns out I'm doing everything wrong, and I could just use my vast stockpiles of Kalanite to do it instead. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I understand how this works. So I have it at dark red, which should be enough, and then if I just right click, does that work? I need a paddle, okay. Oh, that's so cool. I shouldn't have gone in my inventory, that's just really cool. Uh, if I break this, I get it, right? No. Okay, gem saw, that makes sense. Luckily, I have one right here. And then we make another batch. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, something I saw them immediately do with their glass is make a glass door, which I'm also gonna do for my factory building right here. These things are from Create. They are very cool. Sliding glass doors. And there. Finally an extractor. Been working on this for a full week because I'm unable to record. Okay, I'll stick this all in the extractor, and that will be our rubber pulp. 16 barley from just that. Okay, good. I actually ran out of steam, finally. I was wondering when that was going to finally happen. Okay, so it wants me to blow. I just go like this. Yeah, episode 1, I actually knew what I was doing. Episode 2, I mostly knew what I was doing. Now I'm completely blind. Yeah, and then it makes that noise, which doesn't make sense. And now it's... Oh! Now I understand. So I have to spend a lot longer. I'm glad these glass batches are cheap because I'm blowing through them. No pun intended. I did it! Okay, that's cool. That's really cool once you figure it out. I have to hold it out here. 
And that completes that. And then that's stretch. So going forward is below and then stretch. And then I gotta stretch again. And yeah, when it has the little cooldown, that means it's finished in action. So that's two glass tubes. This is probably going to be the first time in the playthrough that we have used this pot. It's going to be for resin. I think this is why people use the vat here, because that makes things a lot faster. And I really could make it. I have some beeswax here, and I have all the wrought iron I could need. Okay, it goes on top of a bottom oven, and I don't use this oven at all, so I'm just gonna go like this. I don't like the look of it either. Big mistake when I was making it. Okay, that is a big upgrade. I can now... put four sulfur in there, and then seal it, and then this will heat up. I think. And with this resin, we can make our first electronic component, the resistors. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. I need paper. I can't make paper. Every other Terra Firmacraft player decides to move south, and I was gonna do that originally, but I also just wanted to have a sort of colony experience because that that's really cool. And staying in this climate at the base where I started the game at just sounded like a really cool idea for the series. But now it's going to be a bit painful. So I've been thinking about the paper issue. And whatever happens, I have to go down here to get pumice, but there's not enough pumice there. So realistically, if I were to go on a trip to get paper... I would try to get as much as I can, and I would have to go all the way over here to the Kapok trees, and I would have to get all the papyrus that I find there. But this episode is very long. So I'm going to circle back to what the start of the episode was about, which is the blast furnace. So I'm going to move this blast furnace, and then I'm going to expand it to get way more steel out of it. This episode is probably mainly preparing for electricity because I got all the steam machines I need, I sped up all the water wheel systems, I built a factory, I got all the kaolinite I need, now I'm gonna build the blast furnace for the steel, and I have almost all the equipment for making LV circuits. So I'm ready to jump into LV, I just need to... I need to get another episode. I really need to get lamps in here. Pretty sure I can run lamps on creosote oil. Okay, it does detect it, so cast iron can be used for the sides as a substitute, saving us 12 whole wrought iron plates. Also, I really wish there was a way to cook this easier, because right now I have to put it all in the crucible and slowly go through that. We've been progressing for so long and I'm still using pit kilns. Okay, and we'll leave that for 8 minutes, and then these I can just run manually. Here's all the rubber pulp we extracted. That's all we're gonna get for today. And same with that sticky resin, so a little bit of rubber processing going on. That's much better kaolinite RNG. I'm also gonna get the graphite from here and crush that all. Okay, I only need one batch of casting channels, and then four mold tables, and then four fire brick molds. 35, I need 35 graphite dust. And put that all in the macerator, because that will give me the amount I need. I also have this wood pulp, which I'm just going to turn into planks. Additionally, I said I would make the blast furnace taller, and I think I'll do two extra levels. And that's going to be a lot easier, since I can use compressed fire clay, which actually needs no kaolinite or graphite at all. So clay dust and brick dust, and I can make those with the macerator. And this is why we like the spade. I should have brought it on the Kalanite trip. That took so long to dig through it all. And I left that running. How much Kalanite did we get here? I need to put away this clay first. 
definitely not enough. I need my Calamite count to match my Graphite count, and those are not even close. So this is what I meant by fire bricks becoming cheaper, because I already have all the materials I need for two whole layers. I can specifically only use the furnace to heat these. And there's all of our fire bricks. All without a single bit of kaolinite or graphite. Okay, I think that's a reason to stop with my factory work just for a bit. Okay, food security is not going to be a problem after this. In fact, the bigger problem is going to be actually finding a place to store this all. Okay, so that is all of the wheat we got from that. And now I need to find a good knife, this one, and thresh absolutely all of this wheat. So large vessels have quite a bit of space, but is there enough? Yes, no, no, I'm wrong. Okay, I'll just turn this 15 grain into bread immediately then. We've finally ran out of steam. It's still enough to run this steam furnace, but it's not enough to run the macerator. Okay, I think one more run of Calonite through these vessels should be enough to get all of the remaining stuff. Oh no, that was a bad choice. Okay, is the RNG different on depots? Because that was two in a row. It's only a 20% chance to fail. Cast iron makes this way cheaper. And now this has 12 inputs. I'll put the two year in there. Okay, I just picked up the whole coke oven and I'm gonna take all this charcoal as well. Yeah, charcoal is only to fuel the bloomeries and the blast furnace, because coal can't be used in that. But also I need it for this. And what I'm making with this kaolinite is a casting table and a fire brick mold. What those will do is al allow me to have reusable casts and allow me to cast them directly out of the blast furnace. And I think the casting channel, which is what I want is just that, okay. And then I want the mold table. And the mold table is also very simple. And then we get the fire ingot molds. And that's everything. So now if I go like this, there's a little outlet on the crucible. And I can go like this. Oh, that's so cool. And then all the molten pig iron will flow out from there into the ingot molds, which I will have pretty soon. So that's all of the blast furnace upgrades. So let's run the thing. Okay, so that was a waste of like 32 charcoal on a non-functional recipe. So I heard two issues on Reddit. The first change is just to turn this all into dust, and the second change is to drop the ores in slower, because I dropped them all in at once. So I'm just gonna go layer by layer this time. And I'm also gonna get extra charcoal just in case it starts doing weird shit again. But luckily I strategically placed this coke oven next to my Capox supply. So I can just take all of this, and put it right in. So will it work now? Yes, okay, that's what's supposed to happen. Oh, I have to right click, okay. So yeah, that flows out of the crucible and then fills all of these molds. Yeah, we can let that die down- oh no, don't do that. We can let that die down, but I do have to let- I do have to start this charcoal forge. So I'm actually going to break the blast furnace again. There, that'll fill everything now. I might be able to cool them faster from something- Oh no! It is trying to heat me up to 105 degrees Celsius. 
It is literally trying to boil me. Okay, so there's the remaining pig iron ingots. And I can just stick them all in the forge hammer, and I'm gonna use this... All of this pig iron from the forge hammer to make another forge hammer. But that'll be for next time, because we have finished the blast furnace. I have taken a, a ridiculously long time to actually upload. Actually, not ridiculous if you look at my old upload schedule, but most of you are newer than that. But yeah, I'd say my work here is done. Initially, I planned to get a steam turbine in this episode, but this has already become my second longest video. But with cheap and automatic wrought iron production, a fast, accessible create system, and a much better blast furnace, I'm ready to make LV machinery and all I need now is paper.